Good to see you, everyone. My name is Janne Heikkinen, coming from Spin Drive Company. Thanks for inviting us to be be present here as uh, in this this um, session of success story. So it's nice to be considered as a success story already, even though we are still in, in the in the beginning of our journey. Um, I cannot help myself of not introducing Spin Drive, of course, because I have this opportunity here. Uh, so small presentation, what we are doing, and then something regarding how I have felt or how I think what what is to become a company from just being an entrepreneur. Um, and then also I have a solid experience from the university being a researcher, so I know how how important uh, communication between the university and the companies is and uh, how important the international collaboration is in the in the field that you are exactly doing at the moment of, of when, when having this event um, of course even though the current thing has not been maybe playing a favor for us but I think still it's uh, accelerating the remote opportunities and any um, crisis gives also the opportunities. Uh, we have a motto of democratizing levitation, pretty solid. Uh, but that, what does that mean? We can we get back, back to that a bit later. But first, uh, introducing myself, I always start my presentation or my CV that first and foremost, I'm a dad. That's the most important role in my life. And then come the rest. Um, I'm also having the CEO position at SpinRive, one of the co-founders. Um, we established the company in 2015. Um, it's a LED, LED spin-off, so university spin-off from, from this university. Um, before that, I was um, um, got my doctoral degree in 2014 and served as a postdoc for some period of time. Um, I have more than 40 peer-reviewed scientific publications, uh, co-editor in the book, uh, supervised four doctors, uh, number of masters, inventor of four patents and then some voluntary actions out, uh, out of the duty. So this is um, this is the background where I'm com coming from. I'm super proud of what I have be been achieving in my life regarding my career. Now I'm running my, not mine, our company, uh, together with, with our, our founder colleagues and with our employees. But still, I want to maintain the first position as being that. That's really important for, for myself. About Spin Drive. Spin Drive is a spin of company from, uh, from LUT. Um, and the, Problem behind is energy. Electric motors consume almost half of the electricity worldwide, and they contribute one fourth of the CO2 emission. Pretty significant, I would say. Um, electric motors, like they have been known for more than 100 years, it's pretty old standard technology and they have been developing of course over time but still there are problems with the maintenance problems with the efficiency especially when it comes to the overall efficiency of industrial processes and how to address these problems would be to high, uh, run these rotating motors at higher uh, rotational speed the Fields that would benefit from, from higher rotational speed are uh, listed, not listed, but a few of the examples are presented there in the upper, upper uh, right corner. In general, I would say wherever some, some gases are transferred or compressed, higher rotational speed would yield to higher process efficiency. However, when we rotate these devices at higher rotational speed, there are some technical challenges and economical challenges, market channel, channel, cha challenges as well. Uh, standard bearings, they are inefficient. 
variance cause are around 70% of failures, and uh, there is a risk of oil, uh, oil contamination of the end product. And how we are addressing these, these problems is the magnetic bearing solution. How many of you are familiar with maglev trains in Japan, these crazy high-speed trains rotating or floating in the magnetic field and going like, I don't know, 500 kilometers per hour? Crazy fast train. We are not uh, levitating trains, but instead we are levitating, rotating, rotating uh, machines, electric motors. Due to this levitate, levitate, levitation or levitating phenomena, we can run these machines faster. Um, the system itself, it comprises three main components. All the intelligence is in this electronic box, including hardware, software, all that. Uh, that's where our core competence is, and then there are some dummy steel and, and uh, copper that creates the magnetic field and senses the position of the rotor that we can actively control. It. So this is our innovation. And some application examples, turbo compressors, for example, for just producing uh, compressed air. Turbo blowers, here is actually our, one of our reference cases. Um, it's the vacuum blower for pulp and paper. Flywheels for energy storage, micro turbines burning some fuel. Benefits of our, of our solution, payback time for the, for the investment less than two years, 80% lower maintenance, access to new markets, no oil, you can get into food, beverage, pharmacy, different, different industry, in, including some semiconductors. And we have continuous measurement in the system. We are getting the uh, position signal that we use for controlling. So why we would not use the same data for um, analyzing what is the state of the machine. And uh, we reduce customer lifecycle cost by 35%. That's our promise. This is also super important aspect of, of our business. We want to have an impact to society, to the world, to the globe. And uh, <clears throat> we have put a measurable target there. 600 megatons CO2 equivalent by 2050. Of course, the horizon is pretty long. But we cannot see the results today. It's equivalent of 600 oil tankers. Pretty much a point. But that's still something that you need to build in your DNA when you are striving towards something maybe a bit abstract. You need to have some measurable targets. Something that is really ambitious but something that has really significant effect to the society, to, to something. You need to bring some, some value for anyone who is around you. The other measurable target, impact for one billion people. That's easier to get in the scale. One billion people, what does it mean? Well, only China. Um, how we are doing that, CO2 mitigation, uh, providing contaminant free, free, free uh, food and water being involved in that. Producing re uh, renewable energy, and eventually we want to be in the mass production, or uh, mass market applications, even in consumer products. And of course, SDGX targets, that's something that's pretty standard in any industry. You need to know in which SDGs you are targeting it. Now we are getting closer to the actual thing. Um, these are the four brilliant guys who established spin, spin Drive. We all four have, have a background from, from this university. We have three doctors, one doctor to be. Um, we have experienced board, of course, the board is supporting our operations in many different levels and giving their network for, for our use. 
and our mission. This has to be the fundamental basics of, of, uh, of the company. What is your mission? What do you want to be? How do you want to impact? That's super important. Because that eventually that guides you in all the uh, development operations, sometimes even in the daily, daily operational activities, you need to understand, does it support our mission? Is it going in the right direction? Is it, is it, is it supporting or is it, is it not supporting? Our mission is to mitigate CO2 emissions by improving energy efficiency of industrial processes by uh, providing easy and affordable active managed bearing solution. I hope you didn't fall asleep. But it's not for you, it's not, it, it, it's for us. We need to know what is our mission. Of course, we need to communicate that to the, to the society, to all the people around us. That's part of, part of the, our story, and we need to storify. But this is our mission. I'm always late. I, I love my voice that much. I'm, I'm always exceeding. Uh, growth of an entrepreneur. This was supposed to be kind of the, the core of my, my presentation. Because of course myself, I'm single entrepreneur. I have my own values. I have most probably my own mission, what I want to achieve in my life. In personal level. And for sure, all of these guys, they have their personal visions. They have their personal values. They have their personal background. Everything is different. And it's only four guys. What if it's seven guys? Currently, we have uh, 15 people in our company. They all have their own personal values. All mission, own mission, what they want to achieve in their life. Some bright mind or bright idea from, from this guy's head versus all the heads in the company. How we are going in one direction together. If all these bright minds here uh, striving in other direction than the others. Do you think we are going somewhere? We might be going somewhere, but at least there is no clear path where we are going. We'll be jumping here and there, back and forth. And in the end, we know this. Okay. Maybe that's not the best move. How it becomes from one individual mind through the founder to the company level. We are, we are only 17, uh, 15 people. It's not a problem. Like we can have one on one discussions daily basis among the, the, the whole team. Maybe not the most efficient time used, but anyways, we could. It's about the culture. First, you need to understand your own own targets, own goals, own, own life goals. When I was a child, I knew that I, I want to become a dad. I have achieved that. But I have also my personal targets in, in life. I mean, not personal targets. Uh, career targets. It requires that the founders, they are really open to each other. Of course, you need to find the right tar uh, founder team in the first place. Having the core, core ideas. You need to have the core expertise, core this and that. But in the end of the day, you need to have the same mission. You need to kind of change your mindset to have a founder vision. When the, the importance of your own vision, it's part of that story, but it's not the full, full picture. 
super important to be flexible. Be open to break your own barriers. Of course, it's that it's such barrier that is kind of written in stone for yourself. It might be that that's, that's the value of the company because that's important for yourself. But you need to justify, you need to prove, you need to uh, maybe give a bit flexibility from some other matters if that's so valuable for you. But at the end of the day, you need to have the same vision. And that same vision, eventually, that becomes the co company culture if you are doing things right. Because you need to share that same vision among the team. Each individual, they must know what are your values in the company. What is your vision? What is your mission? And how is your strategy to, to uh, reach that target? Beautiful. A um, few words about the collaboration with the, uh, between the company. Um, when I was preparing this slide, I had the LUT was kind of the, the framework because like we are continuously collaborating with LUT. Uh, it's pretty natural. We are located, our, our headquarter is located in, in 200 to 300 meters from here. So it's pretty uh, natural that we are collaborating with LUT, but there are different levels. How I have been categorizing that is a width with the university or with the research institute to from us to them or from from them to us. So when you start to actually put this in together, you start to realize how important role universities and research institutes has for the company. If you allow them. That's the first step to understand that there is such thing as, as research uh, institutes that, that may elevate your, your business and your business development. Together, funding applications, there are, I don't know how many different funding opportunities. I think here is a couple of the funding opportunities listed on the, on the wall. Super important projects. Maybe there is no uh, public, public money involved. Um, it's just a joint effort towards something bright-minded, ecosystem. I think universities, research institutes, they have super important role when we are talking about ecosystems and how they are um, generating from something. Usually these, these uh, institutes, they serve as a kind of umbrella and then more and more is coming under the same umbrella and eventually it creates ecosystem that has uh, different layers in the value chain and there's a joint mutual benefit from uh, success of the technology or success of one company whatsoever. Two, um, how we are directly contributing to the research institutes. Um, personally, I'm serving in uh, two different steering groups uh, in um, some publicly funded projects. That goes a bit more in the research level, maybe not that much in the student level. Uh, facilitating research exchange, student exchange as well. Some Erasmus students, for example, we have had one, one summer, one Erasmus uh, guy with our company and sharing industrial insights. Of course, we have different insights from the markets because we have, that's our playground. That's not the playground of, of university. So sharing that knowledge back and forth. And uh, directly from the universities to us students, super bright-minded young talents. Uh, also research knowledge and IP, intellectual property, I mean. Um, research means innovations. Innovations by themselves before commercializing those, they are nice, but how they value the society. That's one way of doing that. Sharing the knowledge and IP with the companies who are then commercializing them. All right. Overall, research institutes serve as a knowledge, innovation, and talent bank. That's how we are considering it. 
Alrighty, my last slide. I don't know how much I'm over time already. Um, believe in yourself. You are the first one. Then, then come the, the, the others. Super important that you know that you are the best. How? 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 Be being best in in which area? That's not my problem. It's your problem. You just need to know where where you are the best. There's absolutely something that where, where you are the best. Find it. Find your personal mission. That may be more my opinion. It's not any kind of general guideline or rule. But if there's really something that that you are striving towards, if you know that this is my passion, most probably you will find a way to become successful in that. No matter if that is being a best kickboxer or next Elon Musk. Whatsoever. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. That must be understood. But that comes from the personal mission and kind of your values. You need to tolerate the risk. You need to be a bit kind of a dreamer. It's hard work. Shitload of hours. And the success that that that's not granted. It's even more probable that that you will fail than success. But if you have strong enough belief in yourself and your mission is, and your mission is tra uh, driving you towards, you should give a shot. Might be painful, but rewards are also high. Always human to human. It's super important to think to remember. We are all human here. I might be an entrepreneur. Someone might be a student. Someone might be a professor. Someone might be something else. But still, we are all human. When we are dealing with our customers, they are customers in language. But when you are sitting face to face with them, you understand it, you realize and you remember. They are just human. Very simple and stupid, but so damn difficult to remember. And it, it, it goes into both, both sides. Sometimes like in the hierarchy, if someone is, is above you, you, know, you think that, that you, they should be uh, kind of uh, treated as gods or like gods. And uh, vice versa, like it might be that, that uh, these other or the kind of the higher level guy or girl, you know, they would like to <laughs> uh, kind of treat you bad. But anyways, it's human to human. And value to people around you. Just remember, love the loved one, respect them. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you.